Hi everyone, Robert Bonavito here. Another episode of New Jersey Forensic Accountant. Today we're going to go a little bit offbeat, but before uh, we start, if you guys do like this video, please subscribe. It does help a lot. But this video here, we're going to talk about how to look at a company quickly and identify if it has potential. Okay, and what we do is we call this Harvard's methodology to a quickly identify successful public and private companies. We use it a lot in our practice. And how this works is you, you basically look at a company that is in an emerging industry or uh, technology that invests in R&D. And how they invest that R&D will it tell you if they're going to be successful. Is it productive? Are they making money? That type of stuff. Now, on the next slide, we're going to look at some key information on a company where we applied this technique starting in 2016. And it, we were able to identify a very successful company. And here's some of the information. This company was in a new industry, okay? It had zero revenue in 2016. And here's the growth trajectory. You could see that it averaged over 48%. Pre-tax income, again, averaged over 120%. Internal rate of return, 2,796%. The stock went from $42 to $1,200. And just applying this technology, this methodology to this company, we're able to see that there was a really good profitability. This was a great company. Even back in 2016, the company was Tesla. Okay. You're most of, I think everybody's familiar with Tesla. And if you look at the company, it just makes sense. They were in an early industry. They were the first ones there. They were investing massive amounts of money in R&D and it was very productive. Right. I mean, it's easy to say that sitting here in the beginning of 2022, but we could see that back in 2016. We could always already see that was starting to happen. Right. They just dominated the industry. Now, this course where we learned this technique uh, was taught by a Ph.D. at uh, Harvard. His, his one of my favorite professors, Bob Whalen. And this course that he taught was Unique because he actually made it from the ground up. There's no other course like it. And what he did was he went and found articles, economic articles, and he analyzed them and 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 presented them very, you know, so that you could understand them. Because most of this stuff is high level math. And, you know, I've taken those courses. They're very difficult courses. This course, even though it was pretty hard to it was a very difficult course, at least it was like practical. He was showing you these economic articles, and then we'd go in and, and, and say, hey, this is what they're saying here, and break it down into practical terms. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Now, this article was Firm Survival and Evolution of the Oligopoly by Stephen Kepler. Now, basically what he said in this article was that um, companies that have an early start in the industry and invest heavily in R&D, right, the research increases productivity, enables the company to lower cost and earn more money. Okay, that's the key. Lower costs earn more money because they put that money back into the company. As they earn more money, they can invest more in R&D. Remember, here's like a circular thing coming on, right? More money, more R&D, we become more productive. We have lower costs. We're more efficient than the competition. Now, here's the thing that he, he looked at. He said, at every, every company at some point has a hazard, okay? And how uh, the companies with the lower cost and higher profits will survive those hazards. And what he did was he talked about three specific industries. He did the pharmaceutical industry and the auto industry. And I really was interested in how he analyzed the auto industry because the auto industry started in like 1895. And then by like 2000, uh, 1906, there was something like 40 or 50 companies in the auto industry. And then by like 2000, uh, 1915, it was uh, like 1,200 or 1,300 companies. And what happened was all those companies, now Ford was one of the early adopters. They were investing heavily in R&D and get, becoming more efficient. The price of the car was coming down. They, the, the, all those auto companies hit a hazard, which happened to be the Great Depression. And what happened was only 30 companies out of like 1,200 survived that. And Ford was one of them, GM and Chrysler were the other two. And those 30 companies kind of continued on. And I think in, in um, uh, 1965, there was like 15. And eventually it became three companies. One of those companies was Ford. And the reason 
that you could have told this, you could have figured this out back in the 19, early 19, you know, 20th century, 1910, is because they were investing back in R&D. They had lower cost. They would make more money. They would take that money, invest in R&D, and become more productive. Now, you could do that for any company or any industry. Now, here's, you know, we, we talked a little bit about this. Now, you could do this, for example, in the 1990s, you could have done this. You could have looked at Google, Facebook, and Amazon and their competition. Okay, these guys were early adopters. They invested heavily in R&D, okay, <laughs> differently than a car company. But it was pretty easy to see that these companies were going to be successful. And what happened in 1990s is happening now in the um, electric vehicle market, right? Who's coming in against uh, Tesla, Ford, GM? Come on. I mean, who do you think is going to, who, in 50 years, who's going to, this industry will still be here. Who do you think is going to be a survivor? It's going to be Tesla, okay? They're just, they're just, their car prices are coming down. Their cars are more efficient. Their engineers are better, okay? You think Ford, Ford may be one of the, the three in, 19, in 2000. 50, we'll come back and look at the video. Now, maybe Ford or GM will be around, but I don't know. I doubt it. I don't think they will be, because I. but Tesla will be. And that's something you invest in. Now, you could take that same concept and do it to a private company, too. Now, here's what Kepler said in his article. Let's just take it from the way he said. He said, okay, R&D pro productivity initially would grow by greater rates. So if R&D pro productivity converges with the age of the firm, with greater R&D productivity will always be larger. So what he's saying here is whoever has the, the higher productivity in R&D will always be larger than their competition. Ford would always be larger than their competition because they are they were very productive with their R&D back in, in 1910. And they are making more money. It means they can invest more in R&D. And that's why when this hazard came, which is the Great Depression, they survived. Okay. It's a pretty simple concept, but mathematically, you know, there's there's formulas that we, you know, that we looked at that that proved this out. But you could take this article and apply it to private companies or public companies. Now, the other article that I really thought was interesting was uh, by uh, Alchin, and this one was about uncertainty, evolution, and the economic theory. Basically, what he says in this article is, listen, he said. Uh, the companies evolve based on similar to, you know, based on economic counterpart of genetic heredity mutation, mutation. And what he said was this is basically evolution. And he said that companies, not unlike, you know, evolution, they're based on imitation, innovation, and positive profits. Now, what that means is like, for example, who's going to be around in 2050 in, in the, uh, electric car business. Well, it's going to be somebody who imitates Tesla, but innovates a little bit differently. They can't be exactly like Tesla, and they have positive profits. And, and really what he's saying in this article is, listen, guys, success is based on results, not motives. Okay, everybody says they're going to be successful in the uh, electric car business. General Motors, Volkswagen, Mercedes, BMW, and they all, but, but who is going to be, who's sell, the only person selling cars is Tesla right now. Okay, so let's see, look at the results, and that's what we're going to really go by. That's what kind of Al Alchin's saying in this article. Now, let's summarize these two articles. Basically, what they're saying is when early movers in an industry who wisely invest in R&D will dominate or at least be one of the survivors in the industry, right? Number two, okay, companies that are profitable can invest more in R&D and lower their unit cost sell more products or services at lower cost and make higher profits. Companies with sales growth and profit growth over 30% per year are typically those type of businesses, especially in a new industry. You'd expect over 30% sales growth, okay? Because if, if they're not growing at over 30%, it's probably not a new industry. And the third thing is that uh, the business environment in a market economy operates like a natural environment. Companies that are successful will in, imitate successful strategies combined with innovation and have positive profits. And most important, especially in the United States, successful companies are determined based on results, not motivation. Listen, guys, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, just leave them in the comment 
below. And if you like this video, please smash the like button. Thanks a lot.